What's up guys? This is Redacted and today we're going to play My Dear Hatchet Man. So yeah, basically it's like Curiosity kills the cat. So I kind of did something experiment and I put something and I ended up playing this on mobile. So yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry for the developer of this. I played this on mobile. To safety, I'm not gonna say how. How did I end up like this? I gotta keep the secret. So yeah, let's let's just start. Oh shoot! What is your name? What's your gender? Female, of course. Your gender's female. Is that okay? Yep. It was somewhat of an old habit of mine to walk every night I walk. Due to the consistency of my routine, walking has helped me to put my mind at ease and numb our fresh cool night. Besides, this was a good source to wear me down before bed. I don't have to rely on sleeping meds as much. There's nothing fun about laying in bed, having my eyes glued to the ceiling and dissociating. He had become so familiar with the path, staring at the same damaged sidewalk, hitting a couple of pebbles with the tip of my shoes. I would usually disappear into the woods. For 20 minutes or so, I would call myself a nature lover per se. Hell, I could not imagine myself abandoning my phone. But at night, the woods were all I wanted. I don't know why. But this has been the only place that gave me motivation to move, to get on my bed. College has been too kind to me, and having just move out on my own just recently make me feel all the more associated. Isolated. Was there something wrong with me? No, taking a walk to relax at night to sleep is normal. Very normal. I never strayed from my pet. It has practically become birdy to my memory, and I was kinda proud of that. It was like my own little secret hideout, where, if I could, one day, just disappear from it all. However, today I feel bold. And so, I wander off from my usual path, heading to the wild. Ooh, gee, nice, nice throwing. Nice throwing. At first, oh, what the fuck? Oh, shoot, the lag. No, but, oh, shoot. <laughs> I just, oh my gosh, I now find myself confused, yes, I really confused because I didn't read the few words, shit, and alone, yes, in the woods, <laughs> oh shoot, the, the intense music guys, oh shoot, let me guess, fuck, I couldn't recognize any noticeable landmarks to help my way out, Oh, how fun is this? I feel like the final girl of a comedy snatch in the movie. Being a track down by the killer. Fuck, I am so stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. Of course I was going to end up lost. Great, not only I am lost, it's dark. No stars, only the faint light of the moon, not doing much help. But I am losing sleep as well, we know it. I could feel the soles of my feet starting to ache. Perhaps now might be a good time to collect myself before I have full blown mad down in the middle of the woods. I lay my head down. Ugh, my head may lay low, feeling a heavy wear on me. I took a few deep breaths. What? Okay, you're lost in the woods. Dark. You don't know which way to go, so who else not gonna cry? Too late? I could help with a few more of the things to from my face. I let a few soap subs, forcing myself to stay as quiet as possible. For God's sake, I really don't know where the hell I am. Snap. Huh? The defeating silence was abducted by voices like a twig? What the hell made that sound? Again? I jumped, startled. I took a few steps back. Nearly losing my balance, wherever that sound came from, I didn't see anything. A muffled voice came behind me. I quickly turned around and see 
a person. Yay! Hey, yo! And yeah, we. Now, my guys, my lovely Wolfie. My lovely cryptic boy. I still could not make our future as well. His hair was wild, sticking out from the top of his head. He's holding something. A hatchet. Am I about to get married? My mother stands up as prepared to make a break for it. She seems to notice her mannerism. Hey. He held his hands, letting the hatchet slip from his fingers and into the grass. His women were slow and harmless. Take it easy. Who the hell are you? Guess I'm guy can really help you out, that's it. That wasn't very comforting at all. Especially now that he reached over to the ground, retrieving his hatchet and casually swung it over his shoulder. Why the hell did he sneak up to me like that? Who was in the woods? Has he been following me? Where did you even come from? I live here actually. It's a couple of miles. Got my own place and everything. Why do you have an axe? I also want to find. It's a hatchet, first of all. Okay, it's kind of hard to know if it is an axe or a hatchet. It's kind of confusing for me. Sure, sure. <laughs> Ah, oh, that adorable smile. I love it. Are you gonna murder me? What? No, I was getting some fireworks. It is starting to get cold around here. I'm still trying to calm down from the adrenaline. I didn't even notice a chill breeze. I start connecting the dots. It was probably taking a drift. I am not all experienced in forest living. Who am I to tell that he doesn't know what he's talking about? So why exactly did you come here? Well, if you wanna get out of here, don't you? I know my way around. He's a gentle giant, guys. See Angela? Not even is to get you. Just follow him so he can take you back home. In case you're still skeptical, you can go behind me. Sure! Wait, he's, is he that tall? Oh shoot, I'm that small. He offered out his hand. Of course, I hesitate, but I took it anyway. I could feel his fingerless gloves as he gave my hand a tight squeeze. That's some curse, for coarseness. But it did warn me. It took us a good while to get back. I must really wandered way far of that expected. The trees were becoming less dense. I could see his traits more and more. It, his eyes were completely dark. They're both different. I oh, should be staring. Seems kind of weird. In fact, the whole time I had been acting weird, huh? Hey, um. Hmm? Sorry for being kind of reluctant back there. <laughs> he simply shrugged and smiled at me. Uh, I'll blame you. I mean, if I was in your position, I would probably freak out if I saw some random guy with an axe approaching me as well. Hatchet. <laughs> sure. Okay, nice. That seemed to get a laugh out of him and let us up some intention as well. It's been a while since I laughed. Nowadays, it's been feeling like I have been so isolated. I am surprised I could achieve a conversation with him, let alone other people. With time, the dirt path merged with the edge of the sidewalk. Thank gosh we made it! What a relief! Yes! All thanks to Cryptic Boy! There you go! Oh my gosh, thanks! I did notice that I was still holding his hand. He gave me a small smile before I stuffed my hands into my pocket. Other than having a breakdown in the woods, this is our experience. Well, I'll turn my back from the woods, walking to my neighborhood once again. Stopping at the front door, I gave him one last wave. I could really tell from the distance, but he seemed to wait back. I'm so tired. Exhaust. I immediately threw myself onto my bed, finally able to get some rest. Oh. My 
bad is to go back to the forest just to thank some stranger dangerous some might say i mean at least the sun was still out so it would be as bad as staying in the woods at night right i stuffed my phone into my pocket prepared to get ready i walked back into the familiar path the cool air was sharp as ever i could feel it nipping at the tip of my nose i tried to recall the path i took that initially got me lost yesterday it did take long for me to fall back into a daze, feeling sensibly straight. Alright, then you are. Just thank him, and you can go on your merry way and get some shut eyes. Simple as that. Thoughts start to speculate in my head the more I pace around in a fractured circle. Why am I being stupid? He should be here, right? Why did I think this was a good idea? Hmm. It would be nice to have someone to share the woods with. What if he hurts me? Like he did... Oh, you're here again. Oh, thank gosh! It might have been my desperation, but the sound of his voice took off a huge wave of relief. I turned around, too eagerly, seeing a smug expression on his face. It made me... Happy? In a way? You seem to get easily lost. What if I wasn't here to help you out, otherwise? His comment made me play with the hem of my sweater. I could feel my cheeks starting to burn. Hopefully he did notice. Well, I uh, actually came to see you. Why did I say it like that? I... Uh, why did it sound like that, man? Okay, that's Angela. Okay, imagine that's Angela. I uh, wanted to thank you. Properly, I mean. I, I know, I know, I already did last night, but I might have come off as a crass and I still feel bad about the whole ordeal. I start to rumble at this point. I need to get this over with before I come off as hysterical. So, um, thank you, uh, Ellen. I'm sorry? My name is Ellen. Might as well get it out of the way. Oh, well, thanks for helping me out, and I gave his name a try. It came out softer than to how I usually speak. I noticed him begin to smell, avoiding eye contact. I was beginning to feel the signs between us start to grow. 
No problem. Besides, it's really sweet of you to come back if you tell me that. Oh, he was flirting. He is flirting. What's that? You didn't mind it, but it flattered you. you I didn't mind it, but I flattered you. It was kind of cute how he became so bashful and flirted you so suddenly. I couldn't help but to smile back at him. We began to start a whole different conversation from there. At first, it was just a regular small talk. All so it is about me, of course. I told him what I did for a living and what I was currently studying. <coughs> Shit. He seemed to be a good listener, or at least I think he was trying to be. It became evident I kind of ran out of things to talk about. It was only fair to ask about him, right? I don't want to make it seem like I only like talking about myself. Why did my voice sound like that? Not to sound rude or anything, but... Hmm? I'm a little, um, curious about your whole, um, uh, thing here. Oh. I know, I just move in and it's not my business, but why do you live all the way out here? How come no one has ever told me about you? He seems to give some thought my questions. He simply gave me a shrug. Don't know. I always figure I live there on my own, I guess. At least, that's what I think. So maybe he was a bit of a hermit. I totally don't mean to touch him. In a way, I think I do feel for him not wanting to interact with others. It was just a little more on the opposite end. Maybe he can kind of weird things for wanting to interrupt with him. It's not every day someone just comes back to thank you for helping them out of the woods. Ah, oh dear gosh. Okay, so we're back again. He was the one to the first start a conversation better than I ever could. Uh, hey. He snapped me out of it. Like he knew I was about to get lost in my thoughts. Wanna go check something out? I think you might like it. A blink. The way you word it sounds very vague. I don't know. It depends. Are you gonna trick me and plan my murder? Sounds very fishy of you, Alan. My post. I do. And he seems to get a good laugh out of it. I just need to talk to someone. I mean, now you got me curious, might as well, right? Good. <coughs> oh, my oh my gosh, just imagine it was just wolves. It's a wolf barking, getting jealous, man. It seems extremely pleased as I agree. Oh dear! He took hold of my shoulders to guide me in the direction he planned to take me. We both took our time to walking through the forest, having a whole casual conversation to make it up for it. It felt like it being reunited with an old friend and trying to catch up on your lives together. It was nice. I began to share some stuff to Allah that I haven't been able to talk about for a while. In return, he told me little things about himself. Huh? What the? I took notice of him trying to crush crunchy leaves under his shoes. Sometimes getting bombarded with landing crash hosts. It was kind of cute. I noticed his skin looking slightly more. What the? Oh, ah, <laughs> oh, nah, the loud. The wild I was getting loud. <laughs> nah, I can't focus. Okay, let's just skip this. And his eyes bore dark circles. Okay, guess more. <laughs> was just a neighbor's dogs so yeah and his eyes bore dark circles it almost looked like he was about to collapse but he looked so gentle he seems to have noticed that I was looking at him oh no I got caught I ducked my head scratching the side of my cheek before I could come up with an excuse that I totally was a stare at him Alan pushed my head down getting on my knees rather painfully Nice, okay. 
I like the way he draws it. Like, I really love the mood here. I really love the oh, shoes. I like crush down beside me. Carefully moving closer to what it seems like a small stream. The black flowers and the vegetations. Almost like a mini meta covering the entire land. Then I see a deer. He was happily musing on some grass and on occasion he would freak his cute long tail. Only an Aladdin knew the muscle so as to not scare the cute creature. I was still in good view. So cute, ain't he? I always come to see if he is around. That was adorable. Who knew I had such a sensitive soul? At least that's what I thought. It may not come as a surprise to you, but my favorite animals are deers. Is that why you call me the wise? Before, do I remind you of the deer, Alan? Anna stayed quiet. I will take him back my question. However, another son stopped him from responding. He got lucky. Oh, huh. mm -hmm. What? Another deer emerged from the woods, joining him. I could deny it was rather an adorable sight of sea. Maybe it's more than one reason. What was that? It was barely a whisper. I could only manage to hear a few words from him. Nothing. Anyways, wanna grab my treat? Another store not the front from here. Why not? I am getting peckish. He swiftly got to his feet again, not burning to dust off his clothes. He still had the decency, uh, decency to hold out his hands for me to get out. Alright, we probably won't take long if we get going now. Much like before, he kept holding my hands through the entire walk back to the civilization. It stopped feeling so foreign, as if I knew Alan and trusted him enough to hold hands. I don't know why he made me so feel so safe. A few melodramatic thing about it. Everything seems to get blurry and I could feel my stomach doing flips. It was then that the obnoxious red Oda. Sorry, loud noise. It was then that the obnoxiously bright lights of the store pulled me off the trance. I can't like how this design is. Cool! Neat, very neat. There was a couple of people in this small store, most of them adults collecting some boxes of beers. Anna started scanning around, as if to memorize where everything was. His attention was immediately caught by the ice cream aisle. He smiled brightly like a child. This is adorable, rather. Pick anything you want. It's on me. Oh dear. How generous of him. I look around this line to get... Hmm. I mean, slush is too cold. Soda, yeah, but I'd rather eat another drink fruit beer. So, ice cream. Hope I get chocolate. I want chocolate ice cream, man. I reach in the cold freezer, grabbing myself whatever seems most appealing. <clears throat> Adam flashed me a smile. He seemed giddy when we got the same thing. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Got everything? Yeah, let go! We love the store, basking in our glorious streets. Anna proceeds to scuff his ice cream down. You're gonna choke yourself eating like that! Then that's how I wanna go. Here lies Alan, dead by the. <laughs> oh my, wait, wait, okay. Oh dear, what? Oh no. He dramatically pulled his hands on his heart and lowered his head. <laughs> oh, I can't start to imagine it on my head. <laughs> I snort and labelly pushed him. Thought I could barely manage to make him lose his footing. People would think you'd die from lactose then. <laughs> I mean, I kinda am lactose intolerant. Just a bit. And you took that risk? I like to live on the edge. Oh shit. Oh, the smirk! Damn, the smirk! 
I can't remember I drew this. Did I? Yeah, I can't remember I drew this. Somewhere. Should I even remake that, guys? Please leave a comment. I rolled my eyes. No, seriously. I stole five chocolate bars while nobody was looking. Did you stole what? What? Did you stole the what? You shoplift? He gave me a proud smirk. And zipping his coat showing me his look. Oh, stone pocket. I couldn't fucking believe it. This man just robbed a store. How did he not even notice him? He must be real sneaky or sweet. You should see the look on your face right now. He reached in, grabbing one of his stash. You can just... That isn't... I said it was on me, right? You aren't gonna waste your time or some shit with stolen candies. Besides... His fingers fidgeted it with a wrapper. Prying it open and take a bite before nudging it towards me. Don't stop this bear. Back, just taking my charger. Hesitantly, I reached over and took the tiniest bite. I couldn't explain it, but he was right. It was like a forbidden candy bar. Still, I feel kind of bad that he went out of this way to steal stuff for me. Oh, um, I mean, sure, over him. It only seemed fair, right? It was at least a good dude. I motioned my ice cream towards him. At first, he gave me a confusion look, but soon got the hint. Uh, 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 um, ah, uh, no. He's too close. Too, too close. Oh no. He leaned down, accepting my offer. Unknowingly, he grazed the top of my hand as I held the ice cream. Or maybe he did. I could feel his tightness grip slightly as he looked up at me. I could feel the tips of my ears begin to heat up. I could not look anywhere else but his gaze. <laughs> you have a good day, boys. No! He only smiled at me before I walking away and continued to hit his forbidden chocolate bar. The hey! I followed him soon after. We walked all the way back to my house, eating a stolen candy. I got sort of cheap thrill knowing we could potentially get caught and I'm sure that feeling as well. Being with him was thrilling. Giving you a tiki tubby vibes, that's that's the thing. I can get the thing here. Oh shit, okay. Here you go. I did notice how late it's gotten since I soon reaches the comfort of my bed. I feel tired, sure, but I also feel satisfied at this. Whatever, I feel that you're also going to see him again tomorrow. Huh? What? I did I hear did, did someone break down? I opened my eyes. I can see anything. I tried to feel around, but nothing appears to be in front of me. Ayo! Alan? Alan? Is that... Oh, shit! Well, uh, I, I did... Oh, shit, I did. I started to close desperately. My lungs feel like they are about to collapse. What? Holy shit! Is that... Alan on my house? Inside my house? What a way to start this morning. I mean, you should check message. For fuck's sake. This, it is even a person that woke me up instead of some kind of emergency alert. Something about another missing person. Just like it is out of my control. My head was pounding and I felt incredibly drained. The time reminds me that I got only a measly 3 hours of sleep last night. A half empty bar of sleeping meds on its side. Wait, why can't she... Wait. <coughs> My throat is going to... Uh, why can't she drink meds? Why though? Wait. I did not want to get up. Nice. Why did I wake up? 
I wonder what he was gonna plan to do. He had a knack for keeping me on my toes and surprising me. You think you want everything I think about him. Who's getting strange, but it was driving me away. Well, if I was ever going to see him, I might as well get ready. <laughs> oh my god. Despite the role of planning, I did feel quite as tight as I did before. It could be because I was pretty much looking forward to meeting up with the local scriptic man I met just two days ago. Now get your ass out of bed and go to Ala now. It was certainly worth getting lost in the woods just to hang out with Alan. Much better than wasting my time being cooped up inside my home. Wire bottles and dirty laundry take it off the space while I'm laughing. Yeah. Right on cue, I see Alan from the distance. Waiting for me, I presume. He appeared to be playing around with his hatchet before noticing my presence. Caesar, stop! Caesar, Caesar, just trying to um, bar. He cutely waved at me with the biggest grin on his face. That's adorable. Did he always have a short molars? Angela, you made it. Hey, Alan. Sorry if I was late. Not really. You were on time, actually. Really, huh? I figured because of my lack of sleep, I would arrive later than expected. Alan raised his hands with his knees trying to get at my eye level. He was really close. So close that I could kiss him, hmm? Oh shoot. Did I? Hmm. Wait, let me... Okay, ready what I have planned for today? He flashed me a hoop smile. How could I say no to his excitement? Yeah, let's... Oh damn. Before I could answer, my phone went off. Ah, sorry. It feels rude to answer a phone call while Alan's around, waiting for me to answer. But what if that call was something important? Hey. Hey, what's up? Immediately after speaking, I look over to Alan, who seems to have an annoyed expression on his face. He is really mad, man. Sorry if I am boring you at the moment. I know it's the end of the week and trust me, I would I want nothing more than to shun the rest of the world as well, but but I want you to meet me at the park. Is that okay? Uh I don't see why not. Erica might need something for me. It wouldn't be cool to leave her like that. Sure thing. Can I bring a friend over? My eyes are well hovered. To Alan. His annoyed face now brightened when I mentioned him. <laughs> Although once I took my own of him, I could sworn that he smiled dropped once again. As long as you get your hermit ass over here and don't see in harm, don't be late or end up ditching ya. I couldn't tell if she was joking or not. She has a strange sense of humor that sometimes flew over my head. We both hang up and I look back to Alan. His displeased face was replaced by a curious one. Whoa. He appeared to be looking at my phone. Guess I have been gone for a while. What? My phone? You never seen a boy before? Oh, no, not that. I do have a phone, but... Alan proceeded to reach his back pocket, pulling something out. It was a phone. An old flip phone. I haven't seen these bricks for what it seems like forever. Is it Nokia? Tell it is Nokia. I bet it's Nokia, man. Mine isn't school, it's yours. He smiled bashfully before putting his phone away. Wow, you need to get caught up with the current times, Alan. Our phones do much more stuff now. Uh, that's incredible. We both start to walk to the park, as I show him all the apps I had. Being in the woods, there wasn't any steady signal, so showing him any type of social media was thrown out the window. 
Nevertheless, he was still impressed as I bom bombarded him with, in with this new information. If what he said was true, then he must have been off of society for a long time. A really long time. Why was he in the woods? What happened to him? I did not realize that huge scar on his arm. Were those stitches? Oh gosh, Alan, what happened to you? That was a peaceful part. Both me and Alan continued to talk about our day as we made our way to the park. I wonder why Eric wanted me to come. We didn't have to study or do anything class related, which is why she she usually pulls me for. She told me that she doesn't feel she date classmates or hang out with them outside of class because well too many guys thought they have the chance of borrowing my bra <laughs> uh, what? Too many guys thought they have a chance of borrowing my bras and were disappointed after I had gold to reject them. Yikes. <laughs> Probably why she decided to approach me rather than any of the male classmates. Angela! A voice I did recognize called my name. Alan puts on a displeased look, his eyes watching the other side of the park. I could see two people. One I could immediately recognize as Erica. The other person, however, I never seen before. How did you know my name? Oh my gosh, Angela! Uh, hi. This guy was sure eccentric. From the tone of my voice, he could tell I was confused. Do you not remember me? He sounded kind of disappointed. Jeez, dude, now you're making me feel bad. I gave him a good long look. The hamster, <laughs> the hamster wheels in my head beginning to move actually. Stew? Nice. The guy gave me a smile and wink. Right on. Oh my gosh, it was him! I could see the light through the draining of his eyes. I could barely hold my excitement and still was a good friend of mine back since we were kids. Even before the two of us attached school together, we knew each other. It was when I left for college. We kinda lost we kinda lost touch. Why couldn't you scream me yourself, you buzzo? <laughs> I wanted to surprise you. What a guy, he always had something up his sleeves. He seemed quite as pleased as I was. I don't think I would miss him so much. Oh, I totally forgot. I have been so caught up with Stu and Erica, I seem to have just left Alan out of the conversation. However, by the look of his face, it didn't appear that he wanted to be a part of this. I kinda feel bad. He just wants you alone, man. This is Alan! Hey. His tone was very... Uninterest. The three remained silent after Alan greeted himself. Erica had this look on her eyes. I couldn't tell what she was thinking, but she appeared to be deep in thought. Please, somebody break the silence! Huh? Oh no, got you again? I hate to start a conversation, but yeah. Great, looks like it's up to me. So wait, hmm? all three of them looked at me once I spoke up. <laughs> How did you and Erica even know each other? Stu remained silent but Erica spoke up for him. Oh, he approached me after seeing me talking to you after class saying that he knew you. Oh, I clutched. Oh, I was a bit stunned. Did Stu go to the same college as me and Erica did? That's a bit questionable. I spoke up. It was a little startling since he has only said one word in the entire conversation. Hey. Eric only eyed him while Stu seems to become stiff. Things seem to have gotten a bit out of hand now. Why didn't you just approach Angela in the first place? That's true. Why didn't he? Stu was always the time to make the first move when he someone. Makes sense. Like, if you saw me, why don't you just go? and talk to me. 
Hey now, it's a little bit rude to introduce someone when you first met. Don't you think, big guy? You were avoiding the question. The two were now staring each other down. Me and Erica look at each other, as if we both read the other's mind. Plague with worried. Surprisingly, Erica step in. Thank gosh. If you really want to know, he approached me first because he was asking for my number. Ow. That makes more sense. Oh, I see. What? Angela? No, I get it. I'll see you around then, Stu. It was at this point I took hold of me with a satisfied look on his face. Yeah, he really says by I know. Without a word, he took me away from the park. He wrapped his arms around me protectively. I can't explain why, but him being so close to me like this filled me comfort. He gave me a comforting smile, which I also returned. And you wait! I looked back, seeing Erica running after me, still right behind. I do feel bad leaving them behind as I drop the hat. Ella looked at me, shaking her head disapprovingly, as if telling me that talking to them wasn't worth it. Let me explain myself, please. I'm not that. Angela's not that kind of person, so not type of person who just ignore her friends. So let's just listen. I could leave him like this. He was my friend. My first ever friend. Alright, Stu, go ahead. He side eyed, looking at the ground and freaking with the pocket of his pants. L listen, Erica worded it weird. I know that back then I wasn't well. What I mean is that please don't pursue me in the type of way. I really just want to see you. I heard him off still. I gave him a reassuring smile. Remembering Stu back then, he was kind of flirt with everyone. It should sure surprise me that he tried to get with Erica. I don't know if he got upset with Stu for still carrying into his own ways or that I got upset he was flirting with Erica. I mean, I cannot say because Stu, instead of coming cold, means instead he just go to Erica and ask his, her number. Like, he doesn't care if that even though he saw us. Maybe, um, um, maybe just this, 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 this one. Even back then, he bothered me, I didn't know why. Maybe because he was my friend, and every time he had a fling, I could get to hang out with him. I breathed out, still smiling at the two. I know, you're trying your best. I know. He said it so seriously, but yet with so much sincerity. And with that, I left with Ellen. Ching. I tried to relax, tried to distract myself. Is that Sunny Day Jack? Blue hair and the yellow gloves? Are they in the same university? Oh shoot! I was bundled into a bowl at the end of the couch, and I'm sitting on the other side. I mean, I kind of bring it to my series to collab them all, and I didn't know they are already at the same universe. Nice. The living room was dark, with only the light of the TV giving any light. Life. My attention wasn't on the TV, however. It was towards Alan. His eyes stayed glued to the screen before he shipped them in my direction. This is the second time I have been caught staring at him. I buried my gaze immediately. I must have been weird to him. You okay? I'm sorry. Are you still upset about what happened? I didn't want to really answer, but my silence was deafening. I'm being stupid. Sorry, I, I don't know why I got so upset. I couldn't control it. I could see him softening his face at the corner of my eye. I didn't know why I started rambling to him, but I did. I suddenly fell away on top of me. I was being hello there. What? Are you? Are you what? Uh, 
stopped me, I was being pushed down by my back. Alan had pinned me. His hand came wrapped around my wrist. Angela. You know you can tell me anything. Who oh, shoot Alan? My heart started to pound and I felt him starting to come closer to my face. I went stiff. But okay, okay, here's the here's the catch. I will upload two videos with this. One that hold him and kiss him. The kiss him might something more um inappropriate. So I'm I gotta just hold him first. That I promise I'm going to post to kiss him, but this time, but that time I will um can censor it. I'll try, but if not, I really gonna use the old tactics for YouTube. So yeah, let's just hold him. I am not sure if I want to continue whatever this was, but I know that I don't want to let him go, even if it was for a bit. My hands reach out towards his face, my thumb rubbing across his cheek. I could feel the rough patch of his scar. He leaned into my touch, pressing his lips at the palm of my hand. He seemed to get the idea that I didn't want to go any further. He briefly smiled at me, only pulling me closer to his body and wrapping his arms around my waist. Oh, that's more wholesome. My hands drifted out to his brown hair, and I slowly began to stroke it. He must stay there for a good few minutes, holding each other. Hey, I got an idea. Do you plan robbing the convenience store again? Alan got up from my chest, rolling his eyes. I'll leave that for another day, but no, I think you like this much better. He took my hand and guided me back to the woods. It was a bit of a walk, like most of our little get-togethers, but for some reason, it felt longer than before. Gradually, the trees became sparse and parts of the night sky peeked through the branches. We were going uphill, having a bit of a hike on our way there. He seemed to have noticed as I was getting fatigued. If you want, I can carry you. It's no bother. What? Um, no. I guess I'm, I'm too heavy for that, so yeah, you're fine. I'm good. You don't need to do anything. I would simply feel bad for making him carry me all the way up. True, you're incredibly cute. No, don't let me blush. Shut up. See? No, I don't see. Oh, you should know. Ah, we both lay down in the soft grass. The sky was completely bare of any clouds, and the darkness of the woods made the tiny dots of the stars twinkle bright. Why the keep? It was so nice and cool out here. I look over to Alan. I was glowing with awe. Um. He made me smile seeing him like a kid in a candy store. Candy store. What's your favorite? Huh? Constellation. I mean, what's your favorite constellation? Oh. Um, maybe my zodiac sign. My favorite constellation is my zodiac one. Really? Which one? Mm, I kinda like the Aquarius. That's cool. Yeah? Which one is your favorite? Alright. The Hunter one? Why is that? The story behind it is so cool. And I shared the same last name. Alan Orion. That's your full name? Hal simply gave me a nod, signing peacefully, taking the pressure around us. You sure know a lot about constellations, huh? Yeah, ever since I was a kid. This was probably the first thing I know something personal about him. My eyes went from looking at the stars to the stitches scars of his arms. Alan? Hmm? About those scars? What the? Oh, I see a small drop and I immediately feel baffled bringing up. I I'm sorry, I know you probably don't want to talk about it, but it's okay. You're just worried about me, right? 
I gave him none, lying on my side. Looking over him, I gave him few moments for him to collect his thoughts. He finally spoke up. Well, Starro, most of the scars are recent, only due to me and my recklessness. Like? Hey, like trying to feed a bear. Yeah, through kinda I I kinda read it somewhere and it's really stupid. Alan? I know, I know. That it was dumb. Extremely dumb. I like I lightly punched his arm as if I was some sort of punishment putting himself in danger like that. He only retained with self chuckle. His smile faded, however. Not old and more new though. He shifted uncomfortably. I gave you another moment. I was kinda troubled, kid. Got bullied a lot and well, I got pretty tired of it that I got physical. So, those secret burns were from your bullies? No, they're from your older brother. What? Oh, damn. That's why I stopped life, man. You have a brother? He did that to you? I have three actually. This was being my entire word. I must be through a lot. Is that why he's in the woods? To escape from it all? We were pretty dysfunctional. Mom was constantly in and out of the hospital, so I told my older brothers I had to take care of us. The eldest, he burned cigarette being where I would win a fight, telling me I finally became what I was meant to be. This doesn't even make sense! It was to fight back and not let others push me. I hate to say it worked. What about your other brothers? Seven of us wanted to pretend that everything was fine and ignore our problems. He was desperately trying to be like the dad of our group, when I did need one I want to a brother. He heavily signed after his friend. I kept myself quiet to let him continue. My youngest brother, I got along with him at first, but... He wasn't the worst one. However, he wasn't the worst out of all of them, but we had a full out. I'm sorry. It's alright. They were nothing compared to my school life. I got to crazy idol and by my entire class. Just because you have different eyes doesn't mean you're crazy. I'm only giving satisfaction, feeling terribly sorry for him. I scoot to closer to him, practically touching shoulders. I can't imagine how long he must endure it. One instance in particular, pushing over on the edge, that day I decided to drop out of school, leave my family, and never look back. They both stayed silent, continued to look at the nice guy. I always thought I was meant to be alone. I did like being around people. I started to feel his hands starting to brush against mine. That was until I met you, Doris. Aw, that's sweet. He took a hold of my hand, squishing it tightly. It made my heart race. Alan? Hmm? I look over to him, meaning his eyes giving me the softest expression I have ever seen before him. Wretches? I mean, I think your eyes are beautiful. I think you have very beautiful eyes. I smile slowly creep onto him, and I could see his face reddening. Thank you. I think I should go back home now. Alright then. We both got up from our spot. I stretch up my arm, feeling you on coming up. Alan noted, standing beside me. Let me carry you. It's fine, Alan. I'm just a little tired. Before I could get on my feet, I feel his arm hook up my legs and back and proceed to pick me up from the ground at ease. Hey! He gave me a smile, holding me closer to his body. I insist. Oh dear. I hope you do not get back pain. <laughs> I gave in, pouting on the way before my eyes began to grow heavy. I laid onto his chest, making him my personal pillow and rested my eyes. I could barely tell what was going on around me. Only feeling my body being set down or something so uncomfortable, I smiled. Calling out to something so I could find next to me. Before I drifted out to sleep, something warm pressed against my cheek and hurt on his voice. Good night, Doris. 
so that was it. Oh, let's just do. So that was it. Oh shoot. Hey. Okay, we're not gonna start. So we finished the day two of the My Dear Hatchet Man. And as promised, I will post the other choice of kids meeting soon. Very, very soon, guys. So, yeah. And uh, update for my episode 6. It's still work in progress. And it's kind of, you know, taking a short break after. So, please stay tuned and leave a like and subscribe. And see you soon.